Hello, and welcome to the Mid-Toyo America Corporation M3 Metrology Solutions Center in Aurora, Illinois. We are located at 965 Corporate Boulevard, and my name is Donna Booth, the showroom coordinator. This is one of several showrooms throughout the United States. The showroom is designed to allow customers to have a hands-on experience with Mid-Toyo products such as coordinate measure machines, vision and optics, form equipment, sensors and encoders, plus hand tools. Bring your metrology challenges and let us find a solution. To see a list of showrooms and to schedule an appointment, visit our website at mitatoyo.com. That's M-I-T-U-T-O-Y-O.com. Today's event, we will focus on the Mitatoyo Precision Laser Scan Micrometer, starting with a short presentation by Michael Grosenbach, product specialist, next a hands-on demonstration, followed by a question and answer session. Now please welcome Michael Grosenbach. Great, thank you. Again, my name is Mike Grossenbach. I am the product specialist for hand tools and sensors. Hand tools including calipers, mics, indicators, height gauges, and sensors including contact and non-contact, which would be linear gauges uh, and probes, or laser micrometers, the non-contact side of it. And today we're going to talk a little bit about laser micrometers, why it matters. So no matter what study you look at nowadays, uh, you're going to see that the usage of sensors in inc is increasing. It's the future. It's where things are going. The Americas is huge with this type of market as well. It's increasing um, dramatically in the Americas. So uh, lasers, I'm not going to go into the history of lasers because everyone knows what they are, but how do we differentiate ourselves? What's changing in, in the world of lasers? So one of the things that we're doing differently is the, the way that the lasers are being used is being used much more accurately with methods to compensate for pitch air, you know, and things like that within our products. Uh, but also, I don't know if you knew, but LASER is an acronym for Light Amplification by the Stimulated Emission of Radiation. I don't know if you knew that, but within the last few years, I didn't really know that. So what is a laser micrometer? Uh, why are we here? What are we talking about? So a laser micrometer is basically a ribbon of light that you put a part in place, and it's measuring the diameter of the part. How it's doing that is through this. We have a semiconductor laser, and it's bouncing the laser off of a spinning polygonal mirror, which is going through a collimating lens so that you get that ribbon of light that shoots straight across, a condenser lens to the photoelectric receiver. And then through timing, it's actually scanning top down, it's actually giving you the measurements through this principle. And you can measure any of these segments, whether it's the light segment, the shadow, or this light segment. And why that matters is because you can use any of them to measure. So normally what people think about with the laser micrometer is they put a part in, they get a diameter, and that's it. But you can rotate that part to get an ovality. So why do I care about segment one and three then? Those will actually give you, if you rotated them, uh, a TIR or runout. So oftentimes what you hear in, the, hear in the marketplace is runout and TIR. So these would be the units that you would be using to measure to the part from the top or from the bottom. So the Mitsutoyo lineup includes everything from something that measures down to five microns or two ten thousandths of an inch, all the way up to 6.3 inches with a single measuring unit. We also have an all-in-one unit and an ultra high accuracy unit here. And there's a lot of different features that they have uh, but you need to select the laser basically based on your application. The counter that we have now is the 6200. So it has a lot of different features as far as SPC, max, min, range, standard deviation. There's an odd flute mode in it. There are programs where you can use it to put in presets or uh, tolerances. You can have different sets of tolerances per program. And it has outputs for RS-232 through the I.O. port or Digimatic if you wanted to go directly into Excel, for example. So, and there's more to come, so keep that in mind as well. The Quick Tool software is a free software that we have. Uh, there's a lot of features that these lasers have, but this makes it really simple to set up the laser. So if you had a transparent part even, you could just click transparent, click an OD, and your laser would be set up to use. There's also a basic data acquisition uh, section to this software. So if you wanted to take some data, save it as a CSV to open up in Excel later on, you can do that as well. So what's so great about them? Um, 
the accuracy is fantastic. You can get down to 0.3 microns or 12 millionths of an inch accuracy, and that's real linearity accuracy. That's not repeatability. Um, so very high accurate, highly accurate. They're high speed. If you have gauge R and R issues in your facility, maybe you have a problem between operators with standard micrometers, this is a great option for those, uh, those types of situations. You can measure difficult parts with this, whether they're transparent, fragile tubes, fiber optics, extremely thin parts or hot parts. Uh, there's a wide range of applications you can use with these. So we've measured everything from beer bottles to barrels to carbon nanotubes. So what kind of applications, where do you see these? Uh, Primarily recently, actually, we've seen an uptick in pin gauge calibration. There's grinding operations we've had them. So in line, this is a centerless grinding application right here. Uh, fiber manufacturers, really any cylindrical parts though. There was a garden hose manufacturer that was measuring the crimps with a laser micrometer. So it's really all over the place though. So it's not just aerospace and medical, which is the highest accuracy applications. It's really anything that you have a turned part. Uh, common requirements are diameters, run out, roundness, ovality straightness where you can actually slide it through and measure straightness as well with these types of uh, with these lasers so again they could be in lab which is what most people think of or they could be in line like this centerless grinding application so an example of applications most people already know them for this so if you're putting a part in it's measuring a diameter but you could also using those light segments measure the thickness of um, sheets say it's you know materials that are flowing through the uh, the laser or you could measure these large barrels like this with two different lasers that are offset and inverted at a fixed offset. Here's an example of an odd flute end mill. So if you wanted to measure that, the way it does this is by tracking the topmost position as you're rotating it, and then tracking the bottommost position, and then giving you the difference between them. And then it calculates the effective cutting diameter, essentially. You could measure hot parts with this, again, hands off. Large diameters, again, these rollers. Carbon nanotubes, so these are really interesting with R&D. This was uh, presented to us in a, in a small frame, and it was so small that you couldn't see it unless you held it up to the light, and it was just like the finest spider web you've ever seen. It was pretty amazing. Tensile testing in radioactive parts, so again, hands off, definitely with radioactive parts. Tensile testing to see the small, the, how the, uh, the part is getting smaller over time as well as film thickness. This is flowing through to measure the thickness of that orange trash bag film. This is an interesting application where they had a problem measuring with blade micrometers across these flats. So they're measuring this flats across this helicopter swash plate. And you can also measure in some cases inside diameters of OD diameters. So it has to be a certain application, but you can also do that. As far as accessories to support, uh, the, the part, we have quite a few that are already off the shelf. Stages that can be vertically uh, adjustable or slide in and out axially, so you can measure various positions across the part. Air purge covers, so if you have a really oily environment and need to keep the lenses clean, you can use those. As well as something like this, which is a semi-custom. This is a fixture that holds two lasers in place automatically, so you can measure the X and Y value of, of a part. Other semi-custom parts that we have is this work stage for very large diameter parts. You can use it in central supports or with these adjustable Vs. This was a custom pin. It was rotating, and our uh, solutions group here made this fixture to measure concentricity. This was another example that was very similar. It's motorized and sliding, so you could measure different diameters as it's spinning along the shaft of the part. So a quick overview again. Very high accuracy for lasers, high scan rate. They can be used in lab or in line. The gauge r, &R is fantastic with these, especially if you have issues with uh, reproducibility. You can measure from barrels to spider webs. We have off the shelf fixtures or custom fixtures and the software that you can easily set the, uh, the laser up with, with all these features. So I mentioned coming soon. So this is what's gonna be the future. We have another processor where you have the same, essentially the same lasers going into a DIN rail mountable <coughs> processor. And this will be great for PLC applications, and it has communications that will be available. It's going to be USB or CC Link or Ethernet IP with these different cards that can fit in here. So it's going to be very versatile, very easy way to, to communicate with popular American PLCs. So this is the, uh, about the end of my presentation. Uh, there's going to be a hands-on demo section next, and then after that, we'll open it up to the Q&A section.
Okay, so at this point, let's move on to our next segment, which is the hands-on segment, and I have uh, Curtis here to help me out with that. Hey, how you doing? I'm Curtis Stubbs, your regional precision tool sales representative covering the North Central nine states here in North Central Midwest. First of all, make sure you go there, hit the post notification button, go ahead and hit your like, and make sure you go ahead and make all your comments there and suggestions in the comment section. Now, Mike, um, there's a few parts that I run into with my applications with customers and stuff like that out there in the field, and some of them are just round parts like this for checking regular ODs, right? Right, absolutely. That's okay. the most common application is just measuring diameters like this. You've got, a, you've got something like a tube or a okay. pipe or something that's been turned down, and you just want to measure a diameter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this tube here in our V-block here. And we have a few programs already set up. Right now, of course, program zero, which is segment two for just diameters, all right? Exactly. Um, we have those diameters rolling. Now, if I want to go ahead and hit my continuous run button, I can catch for the max, min, and a deviation from that. So let's go ahead and run through that. So at this point, with the continuous run, what he's doing is it's taking multiple measurements within that time where he started and stopped the, the measurements. So now what you can do is, of all those measurements, you can go in the statistics, and this N is the number of measurements that he's taken, the standard deviation, max, min, mm -hmm. average, and the last one here is the max minus min, or the range, right? So in this case, um, I think we were measuring probably a, a hole or something that was coming across. So this will give you the max minus min, and this is the roundness normally of the part, right? So this would be the ovality or roundness. So again, the segment two that we measured here, that is the first shadowed segment. So you can use the light segments or the shadow. So this was measuring the diameter directly. All right. So now we talk about regular OD measurements. We're gonna to to get it set button and get out of here. We're back to regular measurement modes. Let's talk about a little bit more of another program we set up, which is program one, all right? And then segment three for TIR, right? Exactly. So what this is, segment three is the bottom most light segment. So you can see on that sidebar on the left, that that's what that is. So here, He's showing okay. the light segment there, but this light segment at the bottom is going to be the gap. Uh, so it'll be the same as an indicator measuring the bottom of the part, you know, sticking up and measuring the bottom of the part. So I'm going to go ahead and do our same there, do a little run, shift and yep. stat. All right. So within those, that second or two that he took uh, measurements in, he got uh, 13 measurements. Here again is the standard deviation, max, min, and average. And here, the difference with this program is that since we're measuring the gap, this is the mm -hmm. same as using an indicator. So this here, this R, is the max minus min or the TIR or run out of the part. So again, different from measuring the, the change in diameter, this is the difference in essentially the wobble, you know, that TIR or run out of the part. All right, so let's go ahead and press the set button to get back to regular measurement mode. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to a different program we set up, and let's talk a little bit about ovality, right? We touched based on that. So we have program two, ironically. All right, yep. here we go. So program two, now what we've done here is it, we're still taking a peak hold measurement, but say you didn't want to see all of those other measurements in it, right? So you only wanted to see the uh, ovality measurement, right? So in this case, you could just hit the foot switch or the run button. Right, and I'll use the foot switch. It's pretty cool to use sometimes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And rotate the part. So it's still taking a bunch of measurements and it's holding them internally. And once you're done, you hit the foot switch again, it pops up with the, the ovality measurement that you're looking for. So that could also be sent across to the computer. So if you wanted it to go directly into Excel, or if you wanted to send that to your SPC software, say it was MeasureLink SPC software or your own software or programming, you could do this all through the Digimatic output, which is a Mitchell Toy output, or the RS-232 output. All right, that's pretty cool. So we touched base on a few of those. We go to another program we have, like for gap measurements, aka TIR, right? So ironically, again, in number sequence, program three, segment three. Right, so all here right. we're going back to segment three like we did originally. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're using this is because the dovetail of this adjustable work stage uh, is pretty nice because it's actually cutting off the bottom of the laser and giving you a nice crisp edge so that this distance to where the bottom of the part starts is, is going to be very uh, accurate and repeatable. All right, so same thing. At this point we'll do the same thing. We've set it up ahead of time just for peak hold. So we're still doing max minus min in this mode, but again, this is going to be the TIR. This is gonna be your run out directly. So if you didn't wanna to have to toggle through all of those other values, then you could do it this way as well. One more time, just in case our audience forgot to hit that again and missed it. Yep. There we go. Rotate a little bit more and you see a, a bigger run out. Oh, that's pretty cool. So now we got all these touch pads and stuff like that. I know a lot of my customers that I run out there in the field, they say, well, can I be able to program this? And I say, sure you can. We got a free downloadable quick tool. So. Let's go and show them why we can do the same thing, but with the quick tool. 
So yeah, there are a lot of features that these lasers have. So this is just, this quick tool software is a free downloadable software online and you can access it. And right now you start up the software, all of the settings that are already in the laser are uploading into the software. So you don't have to remember where, where you're at or what settings you had in the laser, or remember any kind of presets, everything will be uploaded into this automatically. So right now it's a nice, it's a nice GUI, nice graphic, you know, user interface where you can instantly, you know, click transparent or normal objects. So say you have clear tubing, <coughs> excuse me, or a fiber optic cable or something like that, you could do it here. Or in the edge measurement, if you had multiple components that you needed to measure, say between the top uh, or bottom surface and the uh, of the top component to the bottom of the bottom component, you could do it with this edge measurement as well. Okay. You can easily change the resolution, blanked out digits. You can have dual programs here. So if you wanted to list the gap measurement and the diameter at the same time, you could do that. Here is the expanded setup. So if you did want to see everything at a glance, there's a lot more features, like I said, so you can see them here. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to change the type of go, no go measurement, so say you wanted it to be, instead of just an upper and lower tolerance, you wanted it to be a five step tolerance. Maybe you're going to a light stack or a buzzer and you wanted to give a warning buzzer. You could set that all up right here. Okay, so let's go to the number next mode here. So mode here, you'll see your, what your programs are. So each program again can be set up differently. So the way we had it, we had segment, uh, we had program three is doing the, the gap. And then here segment nine, we have a, hmm. also a gap. So you could ins instantly change them here. Mm -hmm. If you want to do roundness, cylindricity, it's easy to do some of the presets here. So let's go into, let's see, so s program nine, you probably want it segment three. All right. So go ahead and click that at the so bottom nine. middle there. All right. Right. There we go. And yeah. then if you click on detail setup here, here you can see what your averaging is. So if you wanted to change how many pieces of data are being sent across per second, or if you wanted a different timing or maybe more measurements to give you average measurements, you can change that here. And then tab two, will, you can enter in your tolerances here. So you can do it in the front of the laser or you can do it here um, in this. And again, you can change the type of tolerance that you want in this screen as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little nice gap measurement here on a little sheet metal part there that we got. We'll use okay. that program nine okay. there. I'm gonna set here using our little optional extra blocks Yep. is normally hold for the calibration set so yeah so this is the here. optional hardware that he's showing here on this zoom in so we've got the optional uh work stage here so we've got some centers here we've got some v blocks and what's nice about this is that it will automatically position itself at the kind of focal distance that the laser um, needs for the most accurate measurement right and you can also vertically adjust it up and down so if you want to position it to the middle of the laser you can do it with this so this is nice because you can set it up uh, easily. Again, a lot of fixtures that we have. All right, so we're going to send a setup for, again, program nine. Program we're nine, gap, gap three. three. Yep. So now it's sending all these, uh, these changes that we, that we did, sending them across to the laser. Should just take a few seconds. So this is the basic data acquisition screen. So this is nice. At this point, if you didn't want to use the, uh, the laser for anything else, you could close Quick Tool and all of those settings that you made to the laser will, will stay, uh, they will remember it in the laser. Everything's saved in the laser. So at this point, what he's doing is he's going across this segment here, and you can see on the screen some of the different measurements that you're getting. So if you go ahead and stop now, okay. at this point you can see that he went to the edge, click stat, it'll give you all the same statistics that we saw before at a glance here. So the number of measurements, 32, average, max, min, range, standard deviation, all at a glance. And at this point, if you wanted to save this data, to open it up into Excel later on. You could save it here, it'll save it as a CSV file and you can open up in Excel. Or you can have an SPC software access that CSV file as well. Good. So we go ahead and save that. Now you know we have this Cal P set here. Exactly, so what this does is, say you wanted to preset it, maybe you have a master, you wanna preset off the master instead of getting a direct measurement, you just want a, a comparison measurement. So what you can do here is you put in your master, you can zero it out on the master, Hit set, and then if we take a look at the laser again, at the close-up, you can see that once that's sent across, the display automatically zeroes, right? right? So now we're zeroed off on this part, whether it was a master or whatever, maybe it was a, a pin that you wanted to compare it to, you could do it here. So now you see the variation. Now you've got a comparison measurement instead. And then just go ahead and get out of that. We just hit cancel. Yep, cancel on the software. And then you'll see on the display again that it went right back to the previous measurement, the direct measurement. Good, so again, the stuff. software is really handy for that. Um, it's great for basic data acquisition, set up the lasers, really easy, 
easy to see and it's not necessary to use long term as soon as you've made your corrections or changes to the parameters you can just close this and all of them will be saved in laser all right so i'm gonna go ahead and move some of these parts here we're just going to show how you set upper and lower limits all right okay do so yeah tolerances so if we put the the part back in so is this dovetails really nice these v-box just slide right in and out so let's go back to program zero okay program zero if you hit the foot switch we'll take a quick measurement and see on the display here see how it says go so we know that this is in spec according to the previous tolerances that we put in there so you can just easily at a glance see if it's in and if it's out now if it's out of spec oh you can see and the led plus we have a buzzer set up so you can see that it's out of spec so this buzzer is built into the laser also so now you can see visually and uh, then you can hear that it's out of spec. So if it's you or your operator, uh, it's easy to, to tell if it's out of spec. And to set those limits, you can set those limits exactly right in the keypad or else with the Quick Tool software. Yep. So if I go ahead and press my limit button here, yep. you can kind of see. You can see here, so you can see in program zero. Uh, so in this laser, we've got 10 programs, but you can go up to 100 different programs. So in this one here, we've got the lower limit. Mm -hmm. So this is your limit limit low and this is your limit high so this is your upper tolerance right mm -hmm. and there's different ways of setting it up uh, as well so if you wanted a plus or minus tolerance from a part you could set that up in uh, in the laser as well yes so yes so. so so now with everything we went over through and all this good stuff I mean I'm sure there's questions that's out there that needs to be answered and Q&A so we want to go ahead and see how many comments we got so far we'll try to answer them out don't forget to leave all your extra comments down there in the comment section. Again, don't forget to hit your like button, your post notifications on, and you always receive any other future seminar demos moving forward. So, questions? Donna? Uh, yes, we have a question. Okay. From Robert, and it sounds like this can be placed in line. Hmm. Would a wide range of temperatures or dusty environment affect the accuracy of the results? Okay. Great question, Mike. So yeah, good question. We have these in line. So if it's if there's a variation in temperature, we're still guaranteeing the accuracy. Uh, it's 20 degrees C plus or minus one, which is about 66 to 70 degrees. We do have these in other um, in other applications where it is a, a wider variation. So there's going to be a little bit more error involved in that, obviously. But let us know what kind of temperature variation you have. We also have some air purge covers. So if exactly. it's a dusty environment, exactly. these air purge covers are great because they'll they'll mount right to the, uh, you know, not necessarily it's all in one unit, but maybe this something like this here, right? Where you have separate units, so you can put these air purge covers on them, and it'll and it'll constantly be blowing away to keep the the lenses clean. And that could be for some minor spray and things like that too. So a lot of times you're in a manufacturing environment and there's a lot of uh, cutting fluid, you know, dust oil in the air, right? Exactly. So this will help the, those keep clean. Plus it also helps the, the lasers keep a more consistent temperature too. So so yeah, it's definitely something we can do with this. But let us know what your conditions are and then we'll recommend what we can use. And you know what, Mike, just to add to that question, great job, Robert. We also have those clothes and housings too, right? Through the Custom Solutions Group, if need be, we can build a custom housing around that laser and or the display too, depending on the environment, right? Sure, yeah, in some cases we've actually, whether it was us or the customer, uh, one time a customer built an entire plexiglass enclosure around the laser so they didn't have to have specific air purge covers they had a positive pressure on this entire plexiglass um, cover over the entire laser with these slots through so that the laser would shoot through and uh, that served the same purpose yep but Great. yeah our solutions group can also make uh, if you needed a turnkey system made up then we can do that as well whether it's here or uh, our American solutions group or overseas groups Most definitely Wow, we got a lot of questions here. What else we got, it looks like there? Huh. Okay, we have another question. Can we measure straightness and form error with the laser scan micrometer? Mm. Okay, so straightness or form error. So you can measure um, segment one or three. So let's go back to the software, actually. Let's go sure. back to the setup here, and I'll show okay. you that. We'll get out of here. So it's set up. Nope, nope, there we go. Up. Yep, yep. And then go next. Yeah. So if you're seeing the software right now, let's go back to a close-up on the software. Yeah, it's fine. Sorry, can great questions. There? I like it. So too. anyway, so what we've got here, um, I don't know if you can see the software yet. We'll zoom in on four. So there's a roundness and a cylindricity measurement here. So at a glance, we can click on cylindricity, mm -hmm. and that'll give you the difference in segment two, but we could use the same thing for segment one 
where you just slide it across and if there's an angle to it or some taper um, you could measure that either with measuring the segment two or segment one or three great question i like it keep them coming and we can do a max minus min uh, with that as well and in some cases we've got um, if you wanted to measure the part again just like an indicator we've put a linear encoder on the stage too so if you wanted to track the linear encoder position to the the height of the part um, or you know the height of the part from the bottom we can track those two axes um, together as well in software. Well, you're just not limited. Great right. question. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. And uh, it could be a linear encoder, it could be like a Digimax scale unit or a mic head, uh, depending on which one you need. Uh, we have a flood of questions here. Uh, let's see, you got a good one here, Donna? Yes, um, I have a question here. How often do I calibrate the unit? Hmm. Okay, so calibration, that's, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different things that you can do with this, but Calibration is usually something that's selected in in house. I mean, we would recommend at least you know once a year is normal, but we don't have. It's really up to your internal uh, requirements as far as how it needs to be used, how much you're using it. Uh, but what you should do once in a while is put multiple diameters in there and make sure that it's measuring all of them correctly. So if you set have some high accuracy gauge pins or the calibration set, mm -hmm. uh, which we have here. Um, Oh, you yeah. can calibrate it with those. If you need it traceable, you can send in the specimens to our Cal Lab here to have the specimens um, you know, calibrated and A2LA traceable, for example, or you can do the laser, or you can do both. Um, or if you have your own pins, though, yep. you know, pin gauges, you can get those uh, certified as well. But what's nice about the, the calibration gauge set is that if you do need to recalibrate it, especially if you're at a different temperature like he was mentioning earlier on, if you know you're going to be at a slightly higher temperature, we recommend that you use a calibration gauge set that's been certified. So here's the one specifically for this laser. So you can see that the, um, the sizes here, that's there's sure. one for the largest diameter, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, in the range. So for this one, it's 60 millimeters. And then there's going to be another pin, which is just above the smallest end of the range. So I think it's about one millimeter. So yeah, depending on the range right of laser that you have, there's a calibration set that you can just put in Mm -hmm. And you can see this is set up for these specifically. So it's, again, set up at the correct focal distance. And then you can adjust it. So as soon as one's in the middle of the laser, the other will be two automatically. Mm -hmm. So we've got this here, and we can measure either one here and calibrate with those. Um, so uh, hopefully that answers your, qu your question. Um, and if again, not, give us a call, and we'll let you know. Most definitely. Um, I know we have a lot to get to and probably get everybody time, but please feel free to make sure to go ahead and leave all your comments there. We have a representative get back to you. Like our, our subscribe channel. Put all the post notifications on so you're instantly getting everything, okay? We do appreciate it. Okay, we have a good question from Tony. Can I measure something like small wire diameter at high speeds? Ooh, great question. Absolutely. Mike? So the, the scan rate for these is, is already very high. It's 3,200, so it depends on the application, but we can... Uh, typically measure it in line at high, a relatively high speed. What we'd recommend though, in order to keep some of the bounce down, we do have some roller attachments, an, an optional uh, accessory roller attachment that the wire can roll across so that you're, presented it, you know, you're presenting it to the laser very consistently. So we'd recommend something like that, whether it's ours or your own, something to present it to the laser, but yeah, we can measure these, uh, these in line. In some cases, yeah. if there's certain vibration, we need to compensate for that. Uh, depending on the fixturing, but yeah, that's something we can do too. And the averaging that we have built into the laser, mm -hmm. we have standard averaging where it's doing groups or we have a, a moving average. So normally if something's gonna be in line, we have this moving average that you can set up the laser to, to do instead. So sometimes that gives better performance uh, for measuring in line high speed. Great question, great question. We got some more here. All yes, right. we have another uh, question from Glenn. How do I set up the foot switch? Oh, easily, I mean, we got here just my little cable. We can come back here to the display. Um, you probably see this little cord, but actually on the back of either your external display type or the built-in um, type, there's a foot switch jack that you can actually just plug it right in there. Most common commercial foot switch. So I'll go ahead and pull this out. Here it is right here. If you can kind of see my hands here, if not, same thing. It just goes right inside the back and plug in there. So this is a mono plug too, so it's a standard you know, stereotype plug, but it really is just a momentary contact for this. So we've also had customers make up their own. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, we've had it for these or other devices where this mono plug they've hooked up to a relay switch, 
and say they have, you know, it's moving into position and they want to trigger the measurement. So as soon as it hits like a proc switch, it'll trigger that measurement with the foot switch. So you can have it almost like an automated system as well. Oh yes, most definitely. Okay, we have time for one more question, okay. and that is about how many programs can the laser scan micrometer hold? So for this laser here, which is the all-in-one, we've got nine 10 programs six. for this, zero through nine. Um, for everything else, it's gonna be 100 programs. So we have zero through 99. And also with the foot switch, to get back to that, we have some new types as well. So if you wanted to, just a hand switch, we've got a little hand switch, you know, button switch, that's pretty nice. We also have an industrial or heavy duty foot switch. So if you think there's gonna be a lot of oils or if you're really gonna be slamming this thing down, we have a higher end, you know, standard foot switch too, which is a, a beefier foot switch, so. Good, Good That's stuff. it for now. So again, thanks for your time. Now we're gonna yes. finish it off with Donna here. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Curtis, and thank you for joining us for this event. If you would like additional information or a demonstration, please feel free to contact Meditorio America Corporation at 888-MEDITORIO. That's 888-648-8869. And ask for me, Donna Booth, at extension 3629, or email me at donna.booth at meditorio.com, or use the link in the chat. We will be happy to set up an appointment. If you enjoyed this event and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to our channel. And once again, thank you.